This film will introduce flow cytometry. To help you understand this film, it will be divided into three sections. Those familiar with the basics of flow cytometry may skip to section 2, measurement and generation of results, or section 3, staining. Today, flow cytometry machines are small, easy to handle and fit easily on every benchtop. You can imagine the principle of flow cytometry analysis like an automated fluorescence microscope. This technology allows you to examine any particular structure. For instance, cells, lipid micelles, nanoparticles, spores, chromosomes, bacteria, small animate being like amoeba, algae, worms, as well as fibers, suspensions of solids like colors, building material or soil, food, environmental samples, medical samples, etc. To determine whether this machine is suitable for your analysis, you should understand the basic principles of flow cytometry. Modern flow cytometers can quickly and totally automatically analyze 96 samples. To do this, only a very small volume of a few microliters is needed. To simplify the process, we introduce the conventional loading of a single sample tube in this film. The sample is inside an aqueous fluid. High precision pumps transfer the sample into the flow cytometer. The more precise the pump transfuses the volume flow, the better the exact concentration of particulate structures in the sample during analysis can be quantified. In the language of flow cytometry, a particulate structure is called an event. Flow cytometers generate data with a rate of up to 35,000 events per second. The sample is transferred to a quartz cuvette. Due to the shape of the nozzle inside the quartz cuvette and the flow of sheath fluid, a hydrodynamic focusing occurs. One event after the other moves like a string of pearls directly to the location of the measurement. As the sheath fluid moves the events in the direction of the quartz cuvette, the movement is at laminar conditions and no turbulence is created. Analysis in flow cytometer is performed by up to six lasers in a spectral range from ultraviolet up to infrared. For purposes of simplification, only laser light with a wavelength of 488 nanometers is pictured. This light interacts with bypassed events in the so-called interrogation point. Coherent light interacts with the particulate structures of the events. Dependent on the irregularity of the internal or external structures of an event, scattered light arises into all directions. Var intensity of scattered light, the size and so-called granularity of events can be analyzed very precisely. The arrangement of light-sensitive detectors in the darkness inside the machine enables the extremely accurate quantification of differences in light intensities. Additional information can be obtained by selectively staining events with chromophore molecules. These molecules are called fluorochromes. When the mechanisms of interaction are known, the characteristics of each single event can be analyzed and interpreted. More information about staining can be found in Section 3 of this film. Molecules are often colorless. If fluorophores enter the laser light, a part of the energy supported by the laser light will be absorbed by the fluorescent dye. Through this mechanism, easily displaceable electrons from conjugated double bonds will be lifted to higher energy levels. This higher energy state only lasts for a very short period of time. The excited electrons then drop back to initial ground state. During this process, excessive energy is emitted as light. For each fluorescent dye, a characteristic emission with longer wavelengths can be observed. Since emitted light possesses less energy, it will always have a longer wavelength than the absorbed light for excitation. This emitted dim light can be quantified by additional detectors placed at a 90-degree angle. Which wavelength of the emitted light reaches which detector is dependent on the optical filter in front of the detectors. Various configurations of the flow cytometers are able to simultaneously discriminate numerous parameters of an event. 
it is possible for state-of-the-art flow cytometer machines to quantify up to 21 parameters during an analytical rate of 35,000 events per second. For reasons of simplification, let's say that only laser light with a wavelength of 488 nanometers is pictured to illustrate the principles of measurement. Photodiodes are most often used as detectors. Whenever there is no interaction with the laser beam, the coherent light hits a blocker bar, also called an obscuration bar, which prevents destruction of the detector by direct irradiation. As soon as an event enters the laser beam, light scattering appears in all directions. The intensity of forward scattered light is directly proportional to the size of an event. If an event is small, the intensity of forward scattered light is also low. If an event is large, the intensity of forward scattered light is also high. The abbreviation of the term forward scatter is FSC. The detector in the forward direction transforms the intensity of incoming light into an electrical signal. Appropriate detectors are linear over a wide dynamic range. A lower intensity of scattered light leads to a low voltage at detector output. A high intensity of scattered light leads to a high voltage of detector output. If an event is homogeneous, both internally and externally, only a small signal for side scattered light will occur. There will be less diffraction and scattering interactions. In this case, less light intensity will reach an additional detector placed at a 90 degree angle to the laser beam. If the event is irregularly structured at its surface and inside, there will be strong diffraction and scattering interactions. However, the wavelength will be unaffected. In flow cytometry terminology, this signal is named side scatter. The abbreviation is SSC. The more inhomogeneous an event is, the higher the intensity of side scatter signal is. When high intensities of side scattered light reaches the detector at a 90 degree angle, the event is irregularly shaped. The intensity of sideward scatter signal correlates with internal and external irregularities that are based on three-dimensional structures and differences in density. This is described in flow cytometry by the term granularity. Detectors placed at a 90 degree angle to a laser beam used in flow cytometer machines are often photomultipliers. In some machines, photodiodes are used for this purpose too. When light reaches the detector, an electrical voltage is caused at the detector output. As soon as an event moves into the laser beam, the detector converts the received light intensity into a proportional electrical voltage. The more the event enters the laser beam, the more the voltage at the detector output increases. When the event is completely within the laser beam, the voltage at the detector output reaches its maximum. As soon as the event leaves the laser beam, the voltage at detector output declines. The intensity of light is always proportional to the impulse of signal at the detector. The area under the signal impulse curve is directly proportional to the quantified characteristics. Parameter assignment is defined by the position of the detectors. Forward scattered light is correlated to the size of an event. Dim intensity of forward scattered light leads to a low electrical impulse of the signal at the detector for forward scattered light. A large event will lead to a high voltage electrical impulse at the detector for forward scattered light. The signal intensity for side scattered light results in a similar effect. Events with a high granularity induce higher signal impulses at the detector for side scattered light than more homogeneous events with low granularity. The best way to quantify signal impulse curves is by integrating the area under the curve. But the curve can also be quantified using maximum height or the width of impulse peak. English terms are used internationally in flow cytometry. Area for the integral under the curve, height for the peak maximum of the curve, and width measured at the midpoint of the peak height. For each event, all related characteristics are measured, quantified, and stored in the database. By selecting, arranging, and summing each individual signal impulse, the events can be correlated based on signal intensity and their frequency. This kind of data format is called a histogram. 
Two parameters of these event characteristics can be graphed in a dot plot, where each event represents a distinct dot in the two-dimensional space. For example, when examining human blood, various types of blood cells can be differentiated by comparing the arrangement of forward scatter and side scatter signals on such a dot plot. Depending on the device, a number of additional detectors are used, all at a 90-degree angle to laser beam. In front of each detector, optical filters only allow light of a tight wavelength range to be transmitted to the detector behind it. Each fluorescence detector quantifies a single color from all simultaneous fluorescence intensities. In most cases, unstained events possess an autofluorescent signal and appear in the bottom left of the dot plot. For purposes of simplification, in this animation, only the signals of green and yellow fluorescence light are monitored. By staining events with various fluorescent dyes, quantification of fluorescence intensity is realized according to light intensity correlating to the number of fluorophores on the events. The more fluorophore molecules are attached, the higher the detector signal is. Because detectors are linear over a wide dynamic range, intensity of incoming light can be quantified. A double amount of fluorophore attached to an event leads to a double intensity of fluorescent light and a double intense signal at the correlated detector output. Bandpass filters in front of the detectors only allow transmission of selected wavelengths. The emission intensities of fluorescent dyes can be thus selectively assigned. Some fluorescent dyes intercalate into genetic information. This allows differentiation between dead and viable cells or between organic and inorganic materials. Fat, also called lipids, carbohydrates, for example sugars, can be stained in order to make them visible. Even proteins can be verified very selectively with a variety of fluorescent dyes. For some experiments, dyes can be used, which would provide information regarding pH value or the amount of calcium at point of measurement. With appropriate dyeing protocols, fluorescent staining can be used to simultaneously identify a variety of parameters, both inside and at the surface of events. The sample is suspended in an aqueous suspension inside the test tube. Appropriate dyes are in solution and are transferred into the test tube by a pipette. The challenge in this is designing an experiment using fluorescent dyes without overlapping in emission spectra to ensure the selectivity detection of emitted light by passing through the appropriate optical filter sets. Driven by different affinities of the chemical structures used, the staining process follows a reaction kinetic process. Appropriate structures move to appropriate counterstructures. Fluorescent dyes try to attach to similar binding partners. Like parts of a puzzle, dyes separate very quickly when homologous structures do not fit together perfectly. Because this affinity, which means the attraction due to similarity is extremely high, molecules do not detach easily in higher fine structures. Dyes must be transferred in surplus but to avoid unspecific binding effects, the concentration also should not be too high. After reaching equilibrium, unbound fluorescent molecules remain in the solution. To reduce this background fluorescence, the sample must be centrifuged. All events sink to the bottom of the test tube with these fluorescent molecules attached. Unbound dye molecules remain evenly distributed in solution. Unattached fluorescent molecules are removed by pipetting. Events are suspended in fresh media. The events are mixed to homogenize them. Now the sample is ready to be measured and can be analyzed using the flow cytometer. Depending on quantified light intensity of the fluorescent dye as quantified with the detector, the intensity is mapped along the x-axis of the histogram 
events without dyes often possess molecules that lead to autofluorescence and arrange themselves in order of intensity in the bottom left corner of the histogram. The more molecules of fluorescent dyes on an event are excited, the further to the right of the x-axis signal's impulses will be located. Binding sites remain vacant if the concentration of fluorescent molecules is too low. The corresponding signal in the histogram remains weak. If the amount of fluorescent dyes used is too high, even poorly fitting binding sites are occupied. The corresponding signals in histogram become vaguely wide and are not specific. Therefore, it is very important to optimize the staining protocols for each single application in order to obtain the optimal results for the experiments.